Hey folks, it's Grimwit from Natch Evil. We're playing Casual Truck today, and with me is Jet. Say hello, Jet. Hello, I am Jet. Jet. Lord that of Awesome. <laughs> hey, I got a, I got a crash ticket before I crash. That's not fair. Today's question, <laughs> today's question is: Are all those Mexican janitors actually trying to scrub the blood from off their souls? What do you think, Jet? What? <laughs> that's that's a question. That's not an answer. Ask the question again. <laughs> Are all those Mexican janitors usually called something like uh, Maria Jose or you know Gar Garcia Vagina or I, I don't know? Disclaimer: Mike is actually Hispanic and loves his Mexican brethren. Flame responsibly. Wow. Wow, real racist today on Casual Truck. Casual <laughs> Truck! Are all these janitors actually trying to scrub this, the blood from off their souls? Well, you can make the argument that these janitors were former hitmen for the Mexican Mafia and the cartels, and this is part of their punishment. They have to clean the bathrooms of America. So in a way, they are. I guess you could make that argument, but I wouldn't make it too loud. Here's my argument! <laughs> too loud, dude. I'll wait. I, I ahead. can't seem to get this trailer hitched. Well, first you get it drunk. Then you get your penis out. I thought you needed a shotgun to get hitched. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get hitched? I got hitched. No, oh, no, no, yeah, no. and my and my trailer got hitched. Yeah. Okay. I have to pull off a ways to make sure that the trailer doesn't just fucking crash. Now here's a question I posed to my. Uh huh. Here's a question I posed to my parents. When the computer first came to be, in in workplaces. Yeah. Did you think it would would be the, a future game changer, or just something that would be gone in a matter of time? Uh. Okay. Well, your parents. I I know a little bit about your parents, and they are morons. So I imagine <laughs> they said it was just a phase. My dad said that. My mom thought it would be something that just. Wouldn't be like it is now, would just be like a tool to use for companies. Okay. At the time. And then, of course, it evolved into what we do now. Wait, uh, wait. I have never known a time when I didn't think that computers were going to be something that we just always had from now on because of the way that I grew up. It's very true. So it's just you and I are probably the first home computer users. Uh, first generation. My, my grandpa beat me to it. How so? Well, we had a computer because he had a computer. My grandpa was very much a gadget man. He was always interested in new gadgets that were coming out. Right. And uh, so, for example, when I was a very, very very little kid, I walked into a room and I said, huh, somebody left this computer on. And it was like a Commodore 64. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I mean, I'm usually told to turn things off when I'm done with them. So I'll just turn this computer off. And, well, it was my grandpa had been programming in BASIC for the last hour and a half, maybe two hours, because it was either that or you had everything on cassette tape. You had programs right. on cassette tape. He right. was not happy that all of that work was lost because some idiot walked in and turned the computer off. I was like four. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know me better. <laughs> anyway, so my, my, uh, my grandpa was the first in our family to be a home computer user. Right. But what I mean is we are the first probably generations to grow up with them. 
your grandfather didn't grow up with computers. No, 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 no. That's didn't. what I meant. Uh, yeah, I guess we could call ourselves the computer generation. Uh, I really don't think that gives us an advantage of any kind, though. Well, I didn't say it did, but I just, you know, to us, there has never been a time where a computer has not been a thing. Just like there's never been a time uh, before Marcia Gar uh, Mar Maria Mar Garcia has not needed to scrub the blood off of her soul. So so many so many children, so many so many children. So much cocaine. It was supposed to be just a field trip, and it turned into a mule trip. <laughs> turned into a trafficking. And then children. the dog smelled the cocaine and went crazy and started Ripped ripping the children, children. children. Yeah. So many children. So many buttholes. <laughs> okay. But <laughs> moving I, on. You know the dogs are. Smart. No, you you went too you went too far, dude. You went too far. That's that's way too far. <laughs> so uh, the movie I got for Friday uh, called Sisters of Death. Okay, uh, this will probably be posted on Monday. I know, I'm just saying. So the movie we just watched is... Sisters of Death from 1976. And it was it's fantastic. A... Oh, so bad, it's good. <laughs> it, it's like, they're, they're uh, sorority sisters. And, of course, this being the 70s, they're like in their uh, mid-30s. Now, uh, of course, we've we've already watched it, <clears throat> but have you seen it before? No. You showed it on Friday. No, sir. Nudge, nudge. Oh, okay. So, no, so that was a great movie, and the lag was bearable. And you know what? The Rift Tracks guys made fun of it. I so believe. So that's what it. part of the reasons I uh, I decided to get it. Well, Rift Tracks also made fun of the Matrix. Yeah, that's because the Matrix is... Well, I, I won't say it. So you prefer Rift Tracks to uh, Cinematic Titanic? Yeah. Doesn't everybody? No. Here's the plot. During an all-girls secret society college initiation, one of the new members is killed, playing Russian roulette. Seven years later... The survivors are invited to a reunion at a lavish, lavish estate, which turns out to be owned by the crazed father of the girl who died. Nothing's going to beat Sorority House Massacre 4. Two. Was it two that had the rock and roll yeah. uh, psycho? Yep. Okay, yeah, nothing's going to top that. That was so fucking good. <laughs> And you know what? I'm glad I put uh, the the uh, Black Adder Goes Forth last episode in the middle because it, it really helps with the timeline. Because I the, the the Christmas the Christmas Carol was done was supposed to be during the uh, well whenever that that uh, whenever Dickens wrote it. So do you like doing the stream? Yeah, well. I Oh, no, I'm not questioning whether you do or not. Why do you like doing the stream? Well, at first, I liked doing it because it was something to do. But then it kind of grew into things where I could expose my friends to things they might have not, never thought of before. Because I like a lot of classic film, I like a lot of high art, a lot of weird stuff, and... Not, not to not to put anyone down. Some of my friends seem to be in kind of a rut of what they watch. And I thought if I could expose them to some different kinds of things, they might find something they like. You know what I mean? But in the end, we all demanded horror movies. <laughs> well, at least I'm finding horror movies that are laughably bad or interesting. Mm. Most horror movies are laughably bad. What did I see? Uh, there was one one horror movie that was too pretentious for its own good. I think it was called Mr. Stitch. Starring uh, Will Wheaton. Mm. 
Will Wheaton have of Will seen... Wheaton fame. Yeah, have you seen his new TV show? Uh, I have not seen any of his new TV show, although Tumblr seems to think I want to follow him. I don't know why. Blue Project, or whatever it's called? I don't know. And... No, I think that's what it is. Oh. Will Wheaton Project. And it's basically talk soup with geek stuff. Isn't Have that... Well, I guess... Soup? Yeah, I know what talk soup is. Or the soup. As it's now oh, called. Soup, whatever. Which is it's, it's just as unfunny and lame. And seems very pandering. Well, unless you like it. Pandering to the geek crowd saying, This is geek stuff, because I said so. Yeah, unless you like it. And then the opinion changes. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> Anyway, the first walk in school of English. That sounded more. Um, gonna gonna have to say that sounded more Shatner than walking. Shatner. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen the commas, the punctuation styles of different actors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Walken does use many commas, but not quite as many as Shatner. Mm -hmm. Who, in fact, I think. Uh, have you ever heard William Shatner do a William Shatner impersonation? Yeah. It's brilliant. Is it? He sounds more like himself than he ever did. Oh my god. I'm not even being ironic. Like, he did an impersonation during an interview, I think on Conan O'Brien? A long time ago, when Conan O'Brien was still on uh, NBC. Right. And... Uh, he did an impersonation of someone doing an impersonation of him because of course everybody knows that that William Shatner that Shatner impersonation with a pause on everything and it was like something out of a cartoon nice <laughs> kind of like how uh, Adam West is always doing an Adam West impersonation on Family Guy mm -hmm. Adam Wee He's not actually being Adam West. He's being somebody playing Adam West. Oh, yeah. I love these meta things. How can you not like Adam West? He seems like such a nice guy. Adam West has always been awesome. <laughs> and let's face it, life has kind of handed him quite, quite the ambrosia. Pretty much. What do you think of the Batman Superman? I think if it's well written, it'll be fine. What? How do you feel that um, Ben Affleck is Batman? I think if it's well directed, he'll be okay. Okay. Who's directing it? Who's writing it? Uh, let me look up. What have they done? Ben so that's actors. You got to understand, actors are colors on a palette. They can be used well if you've got the right painter. True, if but the, then you then you then you say Colin Baker is a shitty actor. I don't think I've ever said that. I said that Colin Baker is my least favorite doctor. Uh, directed by Zack Snyder. It's probably gonna shit be shit then. Uh, screenplay by Chris Terrio, story by David S. Goyer, and Zack Snyder. I wonder how many editors that the script has had. Well, uh, let's just say I'm not looking forward to it. Maybe it'll surprise me. Maybe it is won't. Zach, is Zack Snyder the one who did the uh, Sucker Punch? I don't know. Yeah, he did. Uh, did he? Oh, yeah, yeah, this is gonna suck. <laughs> uh, Sucker Punch, Man of Steel. Sucker Punch was a great story turned to crap. Mm, Too much over-reliance on uh, CGI. In my I mean, humble opinion, flame responsibly, viewers. I didn't watch it because it didn't look like something that would be good. Well, it tried to be... Disclaimer. Mike hasn't actually seen Sucker Punch. He is currently talking out of his ass. Flame on. It tried to be deeply philosophical and turned out to be deeply... Stupid. Overpretentious. Mm. Like, let's be the Matrix... And by matrix, I mean let's tr 
let's look like we're trying to be... Actually, Speed Racer is what it kind of turned into. Mm. Not, not that it's bad. I actually like Speed Racer. But, let's face it, Speed Racer is no Descartes. No. Um... I liked, I liked the Speed Racer cartoon, but I did not... The, the movie looked like it was way too much CGI and kind of missing the point. Oh, it, oh. It's a kid who drives a freaking car. How do you... Oh, man. Up? Speed Racer's awesome. Speed Racer is exactly what it advertised itself to be. Eye candy and nothing else. Um, and it pulled it off. <laughs> now, I never read Watchmen. But I know enough about it that it's a very kind of philosophical, high-thinking book um, about turning superheroes on their head. It's, well, it's exactly what it advertises. Who watches the Watchmen? Right. And the Watchmen idea is, you know, you have these superheroes that are super-powered. Well, what if they go out of control? Right, who keeps them in line? Yeah. And I was afraid that the movie might not live up to that. Because oh. it's kind of a high concept. Oh, man. Oh, man. That is that is a bag of worms just to okay. spill onto the ground. Because the whole thing with Watchmen uh, that I've, I've seen... I've seen complaints about it, and it's it's never ending, right? Just right. Pe there are people who love it, there are people who hate it. It's about fifty-fifty as far as I've seen, especially in the nerd lands. But uh, the nerd burglings. yeah, but I, I will say, having read the book and loved the book, and watched the movie and then read and loved the book again, I actually. I actually don't think they could have done it any other way as a movie, but they still miss some subtleties. Because, for example, in the comic, the placement of panels is important. Mm -hmm. How do you do that in a movie? How do you... you know. Yeah, it, it's kind of like how you can't really do a good rendition of... Imagine somebody trying to turn... What's a good example? Well, actually, a, a great example. Um, have you read Fight Club? No. Okay. Um, read Fight Club. Okay. Because the way that the words are used, the way that the language describes what happens, is as important as the activities within. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like Moby Dick. The, the book is much more descriptive in what's going on and what how things are and what's going on with the characters. I didn't like Moby Dick, but yeah, you're kind of right. I read an abridged version that cut out some of the stuff about, you know, the table settings and the colors. Of the, <laughs> I don't blame the, you. In fact, I actually think Mo Moby Dick is mostly about whaling and less about a, a captain. But... What it is is the language, the prose, are as important. Uh, Watchmen was built to be something that could only exist in comics. So, yeah, you're going to have trouble adapting that to a different medium because it wasn't meant to be a movie, ever. It was meant to never be a movie, which is why people are can't, are upset about, about, about how it was played out. And they always will be. Um, let's move on from that to uh, Mel Brooks. Well, we're, we're almost out of time, so let's wrap it up. What about Mel Brooks, first off? What are your favorite films that aren't parody of his? That aren't what of his? Par parodies. You know, like Robin Hood, Dracula, Blazing Saddles, Young Me Frankenstein. Those are the parody films. Um, oh. What is your favorite non-parody film? Uh, I was very fond of uh, To Be or Not To Be. I, I thought it was incredibly romantic and very funny, and it also is kind of a look into Mel Brooks' early life. It's clearly, uh, it's clearly some kind of uh, autobiography. Oddly enough, it's a remake. Really? Yes. Here's a to be or not to be it was a film from 1940s or 30s or late 30s, and it's about the same exact thing. Huh? I did not know that. But it's it's still a good movie, and that's 
it's not a parody. So, I I'm going to claim that that is my favorite movie by his that wasn't a parody. What about you? I'm going to have to say either the producers or the 12 chairs. I don't know the 12 chairs. I'll have to look that up later. 1970, starring Frank Langella, Ron Moody, and Don DeLuise. Hmm. About Poles and uh, Jewish uh, Polish people in Poland looking for uh, chairs that contain. No, it's in Russia. Soviet Russia. Guy's getting kicked out of his house, so he hides the family jewels in um, one of 12 chairs. Huh. And then they get lost, and he has to go find them. Kind of like a duffel bag full of heads. Yep. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Uh, Jet, it was a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. Um, I think you. next time I talk to you, I'm going to bring up movies, because you seem to lo know a lot about cinema. I love movies. Turn off the engine, and uh, to everyone else, I will see you next time on Casual Truck. Casual Truck! Hey, do you have Skype? Do you want to be on the show? Do you have a silly Euro Truck Simulator screenshot that I can use for the title card? Do you dream about being on a golden pyramid and a bunch of naked women surround you, screaming and throwing little pickles at you? Why am I the only one that has that dream? Shoot me a mail to natchevil at gmail.com and we'll work things out. Include truck in the subject so I know it's from you. And thanks for watching.